All right, we're good to go. Hey guys, Rich here at rcm4.com. Thanks for checking out this build review of E-Flight's Advanced 25E. Uh, this actual airplane is not a prop. This is the actual airplane that you uh, saw in the video uh, and that uh, you'll see here in this uh, building video. Uh, the instructions that uh, come with this airplane are very typical of E-Flight and Horizon Hobbies. They're top notch. Uh, everything you need to know is in there. CGs, control throws, and so forth. So there's really not a need for a, a whole build of this airplane. but. Uh, as I built this airplane like I do a lot of my other airplanes, I find a lot of areas to improve on um, and uh, a lot of things to upgrade uh, that you'll find useful for this plane. Uh, in addition, I have a lot of building tips and a lot of building techniques that not only can be applied to this airplane, but you'll find very useful uh, for a lot of other models. Um, one thing I added in there also is uh, this airplane uh, flies very well on the, the power package that I have in there. So uh, the motor and the ESC that I have in this airplane, I'll show you which ones I used in it. Um, and uh, they can be had for under $80, so hopefully save you a little bit of money there. Uh, with that, I'll uh, let you get on to the video. And again, thanks for watching. Here's the box that the Advanced 25E comes in. Uh, as usual, uh, typical E-Flight packaging, a very nice colorful box. Okay, taking a look inside the box, as usual per E-Flight, again you have a nicely packaged airplane, uh, everything's uh, well protected. Okay, here's all the parts laid out, uh, the quality really is uh, second to none. Uh, the covering job was uh, really nicely done. I, I don't really see really any bubbles or wrinkles even in, 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 in the airplane. Usually you have a couple of those from uh, it sitting around. But uh, anyway, you get the fuselage, the wings, elevator, rudder, landing gear. Uh, there's a nice canopy uh, supplied, uh, a couple of hardware bags. And uh, they even give you a bunch of Velcro and two really nice Velcro straps, uh, battery straps. Uh, a couple of push rods, main spar, and, uh, and so forth. Uh, it looks like a nice, nice complete setup. Last but not least, uh, included is a very nice, very thorough instruction manual and uh, a sticker package that uh, you can put stickers on the airplane uh, if you'd like or you can just leave them off. Now for the building of the plane. Um, the instructions for this airplane are so good that this plane really doesn't need a complete build. Uh, so I'm just going to touch on the parts that I think uh, uh, can be made better or can you can improve on. The, the, the first area that they have you do is actually hinge, hinge the wings, uh, hinge the uh, ailerons. Um, and what they want you to do is they want you to drill a hole down the center of this so the, so the glue uh, wicks down in there. Now that's, that, that's one way of doing it. Um, what I like to do uh, rather than, than, than do that uh, to, to help the glue wick down there is, um, is um, what I've often found is that little tiny bit right there of, uh, of mo ultra coat or monocoat or whatever they're using, I think they're using ultra coat, uh, is w often what prevents the glue from getting past there and getting down into the hinge. And often you see ailerons or elevators, you know, come off in flight because they're not glued because the glue doesn't get all the way down in there. One way to prevent that from happening that I've found um, without drilling a hole in there is to actually cut the hole a little wider and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where all these hinges are and this is something that you can apply to every airplane. I usually make sure that I have the same distance, same gap right here and on this side of the of the uh, aileron um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a marker and I'm going to mark right on the wing on both surfaces 
where, and I'm, I'm, it's hard to do this because I got the camera here, guys, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark on both sides, okay, where the um, hinge uh, is going to insert. And I'm going to do that on all four of these things, okay? There's actually four in here. They did a nice job. They put four instead of just three. But I'm going to mark all those so I do the same cut on all of them, and I'm going to show you how to do that here. Now I have all of these marked, and don't worry about the marks that you put on there with a, this actually permanent marker. But those marks will all come off. Um, you can just use a little alcohol and it'll take them right off. But now all four are marked, and I can make my cuts evenly on both surfaces. So let's take a look at how that's done. Okay, now what you're going to do is just remove the aileron from the wing, and you can see the wing down there. Uh, and you can see your two marks that you made, the red marks with the marker. What you're going to do is use some a, a straight edge, usually like a me, uh, usually a metal ruler seems to work well, and a real sharp, probably brand new number 11 uh, um, hobby knife blade, and you're going to cut parallel, okay, to the slot, from mark to mark, and you're going to do that about a millimeter away, okay, from the center uh, of the slot, and you're not going to cut very deep because you just want to remove the covering. This is how it looks after I've made my cuts. Now I did this off camera because I really didn't want to cut myself and it's hard to see while I'm filming this, but uh, as you can see I cleared away from the center of the slot about a millimeter top, millimeter bottom, and now the Ultra Coat cannot act as a dam for uh, the, uh, the CA. And the CA can actually get right down in there now without being blocked at all. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side, and we'll see what it looks like. Here's the finished product. As you can see, I've removed a little bit of the covering from the aileron side and from the wing side. And uh, what that does is, it, by removing just a little bit of that covering there, uh, it will uh, basically takes away the dam that keeps the glue from going in there. Uh, in the center of the hinge, you can see you, you really don't even need to drill a hole in there uh, because there's now a nice channel that it'll all go down in there and you'll have a nice clean surface. Looking at the top, you can see um, it's, it's really the same way. And you notice the cuts are nice and even and that's the purpose of making the marks initially. So when you cut with your X-Acto knife, you have uh, you know the cut slots that are right across from each other. Now when you glue it in, you actually have extra space to get your micro dropper tip in there uh, and, um, and uh, the glue will easily wick down in there. Now you don't have to use this technique. This is a technique that I've developed over just years and years and years of modeling and I prefer it to drilling a hole you know, straight down the center. Uh, I, I just found that this is always a cleaner approach. I get a lot of glue in there and I get a real um, um, solid aileron. I've never lost a surface uh, by using this method. Last but not least, uh, when you go to glue in the hinges uh, with the CA, uh, if at all possible, uh, use a micro dropper tip. That really helps you get right in and put the glue exactly where it's supposed to be so it doesn't run all over the place. Uh, in addition, some of the ultra coat that we removed actually frees up the gap. You can see how thin the gap is over here. You can see right here you have a little more space to work with and you can get that micro dropper right in there and uh, get the glue exactly where you want it. Okay, when installing the wing or when gluing the wing together, this is a pretty typical uh, installation where there's just a spar and you put glue on them and then you go ahead and you put the wings together. Uh, first thing I like to check when I put them together is to see if there's any teeter, to see if basically the wings are flat. Uh, both surfaces are flat. If not, you'll feel a little movement, a little wiggle. These are not too bad. And if and if they are um, uh, if if they're not quite true or not quite flat, you're going to want to um, sand them with a sanding bar. The other thing too with wings like this um, is you know you're going to run epoxy and you're going to put epoxy all on the surface and glue it all together. One of the things I don't like is towards this trailing edge right here. Uh, you'll see that uh, the uh, ultra coat pretty much covers. Uh, the entire thing and it's very 
glue really doesn't stick to this stuff. It only really sticks to the wood. It won't really still to the ultra, or it won't really stick to the ultra coat. So what I find is, is I like to remove this edge so I get much more gluing surface and this little trailing edge portion here I know will get you know glued together a little bit better. So what I'll do is I'll just take a razor blade and I'll uh, I'll cut all that off. Okay. What I, what I usually do is I just take an, a, a razor blade, usually a single edge blade, and I just lay it right on the wood. And then just very carefully just run your razor blade down this way. You'll see that the edge comes right off nice and clean. And uh, you'll do that all the way down. And it, again, it's just very simple. And most of the time you're really not even going to cut into the wood or anything and you're going to get a nice, clean, nice straight edge. Here's the finished um, wing root with uh, all of the uh, covering taken off and as you can see now you have some gluing surface back here and the overall whole wing you have a lot more gluing surface uh, to, area to, to put the wing together so it'll overall bond together and it should be a much stronger wing. Um, then you can take a sanding bar if you need to smooth this thing out sand it out and do this to both of them to make sure you have two really good mating surfaces so they both go together nice and parallel. You don't want to do too much sanding because you don't want to take the dihedral out of it or, uh, or uh, just change any, uh, any, of the, any of the gluing surfaces too much. Here's the, uh, the finished wing ready to be glued after doing some sanding on both surfaces on this wing and on this wing. Uh, just some very light sanding with the T-bar. Now I can put them together and they both mate together perfectly. There's absolutely um, no teeter in this wing at all and they are like a perfect fit. So with the addition of um, all that extra surface area and now you have nice parallel true surfaces that will glue together well. Uh, it'll all lead to really just a, a stronger wing. Th this is nothing that you have to do. Again, this is just a, a technique that I've developed over the years from just building different models. Uh, other models have had you do this in the past. So it's really nothing necessary that I invented or anything. But I, I found that uh, this is how I join all my wings and I found it really makes a superior bond uh, and just makes it uh, the model a lot better uh, and a lot stronger. Here's an improvement that I made. Um, I went ahead and uh, decided to use a different servo, the Hi-Tech uh, HS225 ball bearings. They will fit in here real nicely. Uh, the MN48s are good servos, but I think these are better for this application. Uh, they are stronger, they're uh, less expensive, and uh, I found the gear train to be a little tighter in them. They have a lot less play than the uh, MN48s have. They're slightly heavier by a tenth of an ounce, but uh, uh, that's very negligible, and I think they'll be really good on this application. Um, uh, you do have to make a couple of changes, and one of the things that you're going to do is, uh, one of the things that I had to do is uh, the servo fits right in here. It's a little tight going in. As you can see, it, it doesn't width-wise, it doesn't quite uh, fit in there all that great. So what you have to do is just sand on it sideways a little bit. Uh, sand these edges down. Uh, take uh, take a, uh, uh, a sanding board of some kind and really just sand those edges down until it will fit in there. And the next thing you're going to do is uh, you'll notice on the servo here the, uh, the grommets extend beyond the case a little bit. See, they stick out here a little bit. So they don't quite, it's kind of a tough fit to get those to go in there. Um, they're, they're, um, once, you get, once you can see how they fit in, they're, they're a little, little wider than the servo case, so it's hard to get them in there. To get that to fit, very simply, all you're going to do is you're going to take an exacto of some kind or a uh, razor blade just like I have here, you're going to parallel the case just like I'm doing here. And you're just going to very carefully, trying not to cut into the servo, I'm doing this with a camera so it's kind of tough, and you're just going to cut a little bit of the edge of that grommet off. And then what you're going to have is the grommet now will parallel the case and this will fit nicely in there. Once again, uh, HS225 uh, servo that I used in here, I think it's a good improvement. Like I said, it's uh, it's uh, uh, stronger servo, it has less play in it, and uh, more importantly, like we said, it's a little bit cheaper. Okay, another thing I like to do is when threading on the plastic clevis onto the rods, they say to turn it in 12 times, which really isn't enough. What I like to do is actually to 
um, when you turn it on is to put it onto the thread so it's right in the middle. So you have an equal amount of threads on this side and an equal amount of threads on this side. That way when you make your Z-bend on the other side, you've got a lot of margin for error. So if you need, if you make it either too long or too short, you can unscrew this quite a bit or you can screw it into the rod a little more and uh, it'll leave you a lot much more margin for error instead of running out of rod or and so forth. Hey, to give this uh, cockpit and pilot a nicer look, it really helps and adds a lot of detail if you just make the inside of the canopy black. Now, all I did was use some Ultra Coat and I applied black on the inside before I put the canopy on. The pilot is a Hobby King pilot. He's actually one of the glider pilots. And uh, there's actually several uh, of these guys. You can get Hobby King that have different color shirts. This is a guy with the light blue shirt. Uh, when I installed this canopy, really simple, I really just used uh, uh, white electrical tape. As you can see, I used no glue on this thing. Really, all you have to do is take one piece of the electrical tape, start in one of the corners, and just go all the way around. Okay, do that one as one piece. And then uh, start right back here, and just very carefully go all the way around. The electrical tape is really, really flexible. So you can get it to make a nice curve. And it actually gives a real nice professional look. Um, it beats the heck out of putting screws in the thing. And uh, it's way easier than gluing it. And if you need to get in there for the pilot, all you gotta do is peel the tape off and uh, you can get back in there. So anyway, that's how you make a really nice uh, professional looking uh, cockpit and pilot. Here's one modification I made to the, to the um, rudder horn. You'll notice uh, right here where I cut a little bit off and uh, that gives enough clearance for that to actually turn so the rudder can get some uh, uh, full deflection out of it. Otherwise uh, that plastic piece uh, runs into the side of the fuselage. Here's the uh, motor that I used uh, on the uh, Advanced 25. Uh, it's equivalent to a Power 32 it's a, a Balsa Products 3520-6. I have no idea what that number means. All I know is that it's, the, like I said, it's the equivalent of a, of a Power 32. Turn either a 12.6 or a 12.8. I actually have a 12.8 prop on here. Uh, you can see from the mounting here that it actually, uh, it'll bolt right onto all the stock mount without any modification whatsoever. You just need to have long enough uh, three millimeter screws uh, that will go back into the into the set screws that are already mounted uh, and you can see that uh, uh, it's a perfect fit this thing fits uh, really really nice uh, the spinner really is uh, I think it's just a Dubro spinner just a regular old plastic spinner that you know you get for glow airplanes any of the spinners will work uh, on this thing uh, inside the uh, inside here for the speed controller, we just have a Turnigy Plush 60. Uh, just real basic speed controller. And uh, I went ahead and I put on there, instead of using Deans, I'm actually gonna switch over to all of these uh, uh, four millimeter uh, red uh, bullet connectors. This is pretty standard that comes with uh, most of the four cell packs out there. I figure this way, uh, uh, I don't have to start, I don't have to change all the, all the connectors anymore and the batteries that we get. Uh, but uh, anyway, that's what I'm putting on all these things, and uh, it seems to work real well. And like I said, I can just use the batteries as they come in the uh, in the mail. Uh, also, uh, this strap uh, they gave you two of them here, and uh, it's a very nice strap, uh, very very good quality from uh, from E Flight. Uh, you'll notice also down here, um, instead of using Velcro, you see a lot of guys using Velcros on batteries, and there's nothing wrong with using Velcro to hold your battery in place. However, I have found that uh, most of the time, a lot of times, you get everyone doing damage to the airplane trying to get the thing out of there. Um, you only need a little bit of it, but still, uh, it's, it is kind of a pain. So what I did is I take some double-sided scotch tape, and I run some along the bottom in a couple places, just, just a few spots. And then I take this rubber shelf liner stuff, and I just cut a small piece of liner out and uh, I put it right at the bottom. So now I can put the battery down in there, I push it all the way to the back of this thing, and um, uh, when I tighten down the strap, uh, the, uh, the liner uh, keeps it from slipping. Now I've done some pretty aggressive maneuvers with, uh, with all these planes, and I've been using this stuff in there for quite some time, 
And as long as you tighten the battery strap enough, it's not going to slip. Uh, that no skid stuff is, is pretty, pretty, pretty tough, uh, pretty uh, um, gritty. And uh, the battery is usually smooth and shiny, so it sticks to it real nice. But uh, anyway, that's my solution or my answer to Velcro. And uh, like I said, I put it through its paces for several years now, and and I haven't had a problem with battery slipping. Okay, here you can see on the leading edge of the wing. I put uh, another piece, a uh, couple pieces of scotch tape, double sided scotch tape underneath and I put some more of this um, shelf liner stuff on there because my battery in order to make the CG work I have to push it all the way back uh, into the fuselage as far as it'll go and it actually rests right on top of the wing so a little more of this sticky stuff on there will uh, keep, uh, keep that battery from sliding around. Okay, here's the radio installation. Um, as you can see, I'm just using a, a Turnigy 9X uh, radio for this airplane. Um, $8.99 for that receiver, and it seems to fly the airplane uh, really pretty good. Uh, just simply uh, tape the antenna on, uh, keep it away from the battery wires and servo motors and stuff, and uh, you shouldn't have a problem with it. And uh, Anyway, that's uh, what it looks like. Another thing to do that uh, will help uh, secure your wing a little bit better and hopefully keep you from losing these screws is just put a little piece of tubing uh, around each of the wing screws and that does two things. One, it keeps them from falling out when you take it apart and transport it and two, if the screw ever becomes loose and starts backing out a little bit uh, that tubing will keep it from coming all the way out so it should still stay on the airplane uh, even if it does loosen up a little bit. When installing your landing gear, you s simply just insert um, the landing gear down into the wood like this. The problem with this, what happens in most cases with most airplanes, is that uh, this curved surface right here, this curved uh, elbow here, gets caught up on the corner that, uh, that uh, is on the wood gear block here. So what you're going to want to do is uh, just take a file or uh, exacto knife or whatever you have and you're going to want to file that corner down to sort of match that curve. What that'll do is uh, it will allow uh, the gear leg to seat all the way down in and uh, essentially what happens is, is the metal sits down into that trough right there and uh, when you put your bat when you put your gear strap on it'll fit nice and flush. If you don't eliminate that corner what will happen is often uh, not all the time but but a lot of times what will happen is is your um, strap won't fit down um, uh, quite flush and you'll end up getting this sort of um, uh, bent battery or bent uh, gear strap and a lot of times it'll crack right in the middle and so forth so but if you get rid of that corner of the wood down in there uh, before you install this this whole system will um, this whole uh, gear leg will seat right down in there nicely and then uh, this strap will uh, uh, install uh, nice and flush Folks, this is an item that's definitely worth mentioning. I, I gotta, um, gotta hand it to E-Flight for doing this, but uh, maybe more model companies will start doing this. But what they did was is they included um, uh, this really nice nylon spacer that fits right on uh, prior to putting the wheel on. It helps keep the, uh, helps keep the wheel uh, off the axle uh, and uh, also keeps the axle or the, uh, the, the hub of the wheel from, from wearing out. Another nice thing that they did was they have one side of the wheel that's recessed just like this side and the other side of the wheel has a little flange that sticks up a little spacing area and what you do is is the recessed area this is this is again this is just a little detail that they put in there that uh, a lot of us probably don't notice but the recessed side is intended to go uh, against this nylon spacer and the the part with the with the uh, with the uh, little spacer end stuck to it uh, is intended to go where the wheel collar fits on so you can easily get your screwdriver in from this side. Again, really nice feature and a very nice quality wheel. Uh, nice job, E-Flight. Another feature worth mentioning is uh, the, key, the battery latch. This is probably one of the nicest battery compartment door and latch combinations that I've seen. It just consists of this plastic piece that you just rotate and lift up and you've got a little uh, tongue and groove type design. You've got a real nice slot for it to fit in and it comes uh, already assembled and already done from the factory just like this. So again, uh, definitely uh, A plus for E-Flight for uh, putting together such a nice battery compartment door.
Okay guys, that concludes this build video on eFlight's Advanced 25E. I hope you found it informative uh, and useful. Uh, please feel free to leave your comments here on the video or uh, emails via the rcinformer.com website. Please subscribe and stay tuned. We got lots of videos on the way. Thanks for watching.